it's different here because of our hills. You get an icy road and you, school buses can't be driving up or down those kind of things. So I, I always say that if it looks like snow, I'm definitely gonna be talking about it out loud, screaming from the rooftop. Transportation, um, there's a lot of unknown factors out there that um, we have to be prepared for. Weather events are one of them. And we all know that Seattle has a pretty moderate temperate maritime climate, so snow events haven't really been an issue in the past. However, uh, thinking about what had happened last year and looking forward, it is important to have a plan that you know you can pull out. And we have been working very, very closely with the Seattle Department of Transportation and other um, government agencies in Seattle, along with Metro and the schools, to uh, come together and develop the best plan for possible snow event. One of the things that I'm really excited about working with Jeff and Seattle Public Schools here in, in 2020 uh, is that we've, we've both ramped up our uh, inspection uh, protocols throughout the night so that Seattle Public Schools can make the best decision going forward and have a full assessment of the condition of our arterials as well as the uh, neighborhood streets uh, around those schools that are usually more particularly impacted by snow and ice. The models will start picking it up and say, okay, something's coming our way. Is it going to be a windstorm? Is it going to be a snowstorm? Is it going to be a rainstorm? Is, is it going to be flooding? Is it going to close the passes? Or is it going to close school? That kind of stuff. Uh, those models have looked really, really good uh, with, you know, five days, six days, seven days, where, where all of a sudden I'm saying 10 days out, maybe it's not going to shut down all the schools, but hey, this is a setup for cold air and moisture, you know, maybe just ice at the very least and making for icy roads, making it so that we have school delays. So I totally uh, appreciate the, the, the new models and, and just how much way more accurate they are. The predictive models have become so accurate um, over, over the past 10 years that it's very important for us, and when I say us, Seattle Public Schools as well as King County Metro and SDOT, to look at these um, very accurate forecasts. We've seen a tremendous improvement in the accuracy of the forecast, particularly within uh, the 12 hours preceding an event. If we hear that there is an impending snow event uh, coming the, the, the next day, say around noontime, then you, we have to really think uh, very carefully about whether we just want to close school in the event that it does happen so that we don't put people at risk in the event of a major snowstorm or ice event. There are a lot of people that rely on transit services uh, and in order to get to bus stops, uh, they need to uh, cross over sidewalks to get to those critical transit routes. So one of the things that we really want to encourage people to do is to be prepared before a storm hits. You know, get your salt, your de-icing uh, materials, get your snow shovels now, right, so that you can lean in and keep your sidewalks clear so that all users can, can use those sidewalks to get around and get safely to their uh, transit stops. Because we're a city of seven hills, we can be hit uh, in one part of the city and it, in terms of snow or ice in another, it would just be rain or maybe even sunshine. When you're talking about a district, you're talking about a huge area that maybe even within that area, maybe within even the district, you could have uh, dry roads or not icy roads. Many, many times in Seattle where, you know, downtown Seattle, nothing happens. But, but man, if you go out, you know, uh, to some of these hills, and some of the higher hills, we got snow. We got four inches of snow this morning. Our kids can't go anywhere. Buses can't go anywhere. So uh, it really does get down to these specific microclimates. Another thing that makes uh, fighting snow and ice here challenging in the Northwest is the ever-changing uh, humidity levels uh, and temperature fluctuations that we get. Um, and so also it's not very often that we uh, get uh, snow and ice impacts in our region. So not a lot of people are used to driving in these conditions. So with all that together, um, we really have to look out for one another uh, and coordinate across agencies. And we look to, uh, look to our communities to lean in and keep those sidewalks clear. It's very important for us to scope out the entire city, look at the areas that we know have um, historically been more challenging in a weather event, and then make a decision that is best for 
the entire school district. We have a lot of information on our uh, SDOT website. We encourage people to go there. You can find information about the uh, de-icing and plowing activities of our trucks. You can get a lot more information about uh, how we coordinate with other transit agencies to make sure we're minimizing the impacts of uh, the winter event. For the latest Seattle Public Schools weather-related schedule changes, first check out local television or radio stations, SPS social media posts on Facebook and Twitter, also district and school websites. And lastly, families will receive a phone call, email, text message, and mobile app notification. And for any other weather-related information, go to seattleschools.org forward slash winter weather. Safety has to be the, the, the primary uh, driver for transportation because if we can meet the safety standards and get our kids to school on time every single day, then we know that they're going to be at the most optimal uh, for ready to learn and to do their best at school scholastically every day.